we had a, an attitude to them where we, whereby we regarded them almost as subhuman. I would say it was a hatred, a hate of the Japanese. Uh, what's a good Jap, you know? And you'd say, oh, a dead one. And having defeated the Japanese, let's go and uh, uh, strike the last. From the end of the Second World War until the conclusion of a peace treaty in 1952, Australia committed over 36,000 men and women to serve in the British Commonwealth Occupation Force in Japan. Their job was a difficult one yeah, for the military sly force. people. This is, this is the feeling we all had during the war years. You, you can't trust them. You don't know what they're going to do. I think on the trip to Japan was talking on the boat to people. Everybody was apprehensive. No one knew what to expect. It was seen by all of us as, be, as being an adventure. I think some people went there hoping to kill more Japs, really. On February the 13th, 1946, Australian soldiers sighted Japan for the first time as their troop ship entered the inland sea, headed for the Japanese naval port of Kure. The first impact that war that really hit us was to see the wrecks of the Japanese Navy. Uh, they'd obviously been sunk at anchor by the B-29s, the US Air Force, and they included uh, もう、それこそ There was no great fanfare. We uh, simply, uh, as we came alongside and the gangplanks went down, uh, we disembarked. We went down about two streets. The atomic bomb that was exploded over Hiroshima at 8.15 a.m. on August the 6th, 1945, devastated the city and killed over 150,000 people. Those who did not die instantly suffered trauma, burns, and the effects of radiation. I don't really know how we came to get invited to go to this Japanese hospital. And there were people there with um, arms and legs practically missing and their faces and body partly eaten away, burnt away. And uh, the, the smell from the like rotting, uh, I suppose, rotting flesh and that sort of thing, uh, horrific. And uh, no, it was really, really terrible. And this is, this is why I feel, no, that bomb should have never been dropped for that reason. But I'm not about to bound up to him and say, hey, you two, separate. Get away from each other. That's stupid. But some of our people stuck to the rules, and they stuck to them very strictly. And some very fine careers went down the drain when they shouldn't have. The whole idea of democracy, which we were told... Despite the threat of disciplinary measures, the Australian troops would continue to fraternise. 
それとかあのヨットにも連れてってくださったことがありますそれもやはりあの事務員の方たちをね連れてとっても楽しかったですやっぱりこれも初めての経験でしたしでその時にあの一人の兵隊さんが歌を教えてくださってあのその歌はあの題名は私覚えてませんけれど「あ、まあ、Rose must remain with the sun and the rain all its lovely promise won't come true」。占領軍ヤークについてもあの同じように戦中の軍隊ヤークと同じく等しく礼された女たち軍も米軍も上陸,上陸してあの日本の国策売春の性の教音には皆さんあの同じように教,あの教授っていう,の言うんでしょうか受けられたということは同じであったように思います日本の天皇制の階級From an occupying power to that of protective power in other words our former enemies were now our primary responsibility or our responsibility in terms of protecting them from their enemies We had one fellow that used to work in the, in, the, in the camp, and one of the things I remember saying him, like, what's the attitude? Will you ever have another go, sort of thing? Would you ever start another war? And he said, oh, well, he said, the wheel keeps turning, you know, and we're down there now, one day we'll be back up there. And he said, the whole complexion will change. Hopes that Japanese war reparations would pay for the occupation came to nothing. In 1948, The Australian government began to reduce its forces, but still publicly stuck to its commitment to keep a symbol. No medals were ever struck. And maybe every soldier who serves overseas should have a medal to pass on to his grandchildren or something like that. They've never received anything like that. They have, they've had no, none of the normal recognition that our diggers have received from every other war. There's no official thing shown in the War Museum, which I think is a place where it should, when you consider the number of Australians that served there and the fact that so many died there. Many veterans of the Australian occupation of Japan now face another enemy, a possible legacy of their time in the atom bomb city of Hiroshima. Out of my own unit, there's of 27. There's only seven of us left. And various ones, like Joe Green,、uh, has died of massive cancers.、Uh, another fellow,、uh, Laurie Tibbetts, he died of massive cancer. And they will be, then be convinced. We, we, don't want them, we don't want them to take our word for anything. We want them to investigate it, do a survey, and then they'll know themselves. They'll know what we know, what we suspect. Now, the fact that 50 years on, These people who were committed to operations or activities in support of the occupation of Japan have not been given the normal entitlements that we give to our service personnel is both immoral and unjust and should be corrected. The promise we made to us was、uh, in the